great thing is, is that we get to keep it in the same spot. It's grandfathered because we're, re we're repairing it. <laughs> We are back on the Rokovich project, the suspended garage. And we're gonna see now that the foundation's been poured and hopefully we got some framers here. Let's take a look. Getting it right, it certainly does matter. The blue line represents the edge of the foundation, then it'll get siding, the edge of the where this is gonna go, where the, the walls are gonna be. And then with and then with the siding and the build out, it'll go out. And then normally we plaster this foundation one time to get it completely flush so that it looks extra precise. Things move and things shift during during the pouring of a foundation. The number one thing to get it right is the is the structure first. Then you go back and you kind of like it's kind of like priming a and uh, sanding something, a piece of wood or a car, automotive, and you build out and you get it just perfect once you get the final structure on it. So. This, this will look absolutely gorgeous to the eye. It's all been structurally built correctly and sound and strong. Uh, the, as you can see, the concrete is now cured. It's not green anymore. If we'd have gotten out here last week, right after the pour, it would have been green still. And a couple things, one of the main reasons you don't want to do that is because it's, it's really delicate to the touch. If you, if you drag a, a tool across it, it's going to scratch it. This way it's hard now and we can it's a lot more durable then of course you don't want to put any real huge loads on anything that's green concrete because it hasn't cured strong enough but within about 48 hours it starts changing dramatically and then it's strong enough to put good loads on it and it resists the scratching it'll all be really clean at the end of it it'll look great and you can see one of the uh the things that you do in a garage or you should do in a garage if you look here if you look at this distance here, and then you look down there, there's a difference. So the top is level, but the bottom is not. The bottom is, is not level because we want water to be able to drain out. If a car pulls in, it's got water on it, or if it leaks anything, the water goes out the front door, the, the big door. And you can also wash it. You can wash out your garage, and it'll all want to go that way, rather than having ponding or standing water. All of this is level, of course, because that's the area where the living and we've got our steps and our entranceway. You can see they've already cut out for the door here. Right here is where the door is. And you can also see that they've got the bolts, the anchor bolts down. And that all meets the codes with the strong anchor bolts that have been put down. This is a, a way to keep it all really resistant. Now, if we'll come around over here, I'm going to show you the what's called portal framing. That's what this is. Last week we were talking and Chad said he had to come over and put in the, 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 uh, the straps. And the straps go way down deep into the concrete. And they are part of this structure. And the, the thing is, is it's not really made for this way. As you can see, it would give. It's meant for going this way. And you cannot get it to move right or left this way. And what that does is when you have a big opening like this, which you can't see right now because this is temporary bracing but as you know a garage door will have a big opening very large two-car garage opening and what that does is it weakens weakens the structure naturally when you have openings in a building it weakens it so what we have to do is put this portal framing system in to give it extra strength and what this is just one of several components that will be built in here we'll be having the the multiple studs come up in this level and there will also be a siding a sheathing on here. So this can be bent out, the sheathing can be applied and then you can bend it back. And then you structurally nail every one of these openings, every one of these holes gets structurally nailed. What that does, it prevents racking. There are many garages that have been built that are now leaning and you may have seen some. This will never happen with this project. You will never over a period of time start to see that this building starts to shift. A lot of people just think, well, that's what garages do, I guess, over a period of time, and that's not true. It's not supposed to be that way. But when you take out and you only have a little bit of wall left, this can make a big difference. This is called portal framing. It's a portal framing system. 
and these brackets are not cheap and doing the rest of the work that we're going to do covering it with an osb product a sheathing not just putting it on there but structurally nailing it and making sure that it goes all the way up to the top the other thing is how the how the headers go in there you're going to see that later on when they get this framed how the headers go back so we'll be coming back and pretty have we have to do that to do it right yeah but is, um, it like is it a code requirement yeah it is a code requirement now it used to not be but it is a code requirement now and some people try to avoid it some people get around it sometimes inspectors don't catch it because they get to be in building too many uh, projects some communities catch these kinds of things more than others but it is part of the code in most circumstances now sometimes when you have enough wall on each side of it like maybe this one wouldn't have needed it because it has a lot of wall on it we still do it anyway because we want to get into that method of not having to worry about it being turned down by an inspector or it just being any in any way weaker we know we would have to do it over here because it's real shallow in fact over here you see there's two of them there's two of them here to make to make that stronger and here's an example of how this one can be bent out they could be bent and then folded right back up and there's not a problem with that one's been bent out of the way because of this beam that's temporarily here in our way well, all of that's going to look really good and give us the strength we need so this building once the braces are taken off it still will not move at all because all the walls will be strong structurally they'll have bracing in them but where we can't put a brace in it here this creates a brace system and so this header normally most guys will try to frame the header and it'll come out to here it'll come out to here and stop we're going to go ahead and go all the way through to the edge of the wall and that's an extra long header but that's the right way to do it and then it braces it even more and then the way we put the we apply the sheathing on it a lot of people will want to cut it right where it meets the horizontal members or go all the way through and then cut another piece next to it you're going to see that that we do not do that we go around and take the whole sheet and make it one continuous l and that's going to be the strength that we need extra strength every one of those little components the header going through the sheathing being cut in an l how we nail it and how we use these straps is all part of that system. And then of course, you can see here, you've got a big special bolt and a bracket that goes on this side because that requires it on that short of a wall. So that's also part of that portal system, portal bracketing. So it's looking good. We've got our drop down for our garage door. That lip is to keep water from coming in to the bottom of the garage door. And that's just a standard practice. We also have, just to point out, we, we did a, did a uh, smooth, smooth finish on the concrete. And what that does, and you can even see a little bit of shine if you look at it in certain angles. The reason that we do that is because it seals the pores. When you're getting into a garage system, you want the pores to be sealed. It's not as good on traction, but you figure you're in a garage, you're not in the rain. But when you do get an oil stain, you can clean it up easily. If you get a spill of any kind, it cleans up so much easier without leaving a stain. Much, much less likely to leave stains. And it can be sealed regularly and keep that seal going. Now, on the outside, we use a different finish. And this is a broom finish. You have to have it out here because it gets moisture regularly. This resists slippage. You can see the little ridges in it and it's going to resist slippage. It's going to be able to allow you to get on there and not fall, bust your rear whenever you uh, have a little wood of water. That's Ins more like driveways. Inside it's different. Yeah, this is how driveways are done, exactly. You gotta have it, you gotta have it on outside surfaces. It does stain easier, but there's just no avoiding that. You would, you would fall and have a liability situation. We're also breaking out this part of the foundation. After the framing is done, we get all the tra traffic out of here. We're gonna continue breaking this up. And then we're going to pour a brand new driveway that will line up perfectly with this garage. As you can see, it, it had a water issue. It had water drainage issues. Now it's all going to be solved. We're going to be coming up a lot higher than it used to be. This is a big difference in the heights from where it used to be. All of this is now out of the ground and no longer will water be rushing into it and causing the advanced deterioration that we saw before. Now it's going to be solved. And the great thing is, is that we get to keep it in the same spot it's grandfathered because we're, re we're repairing it. <laughs> so it's a, it's a good thing. It's going to be beautiful. We'll come back soon and we'll show you the rest of it.